The original Super Mario Bros. has one of the most storied histories, and that's just in speedrunning, let alone in general. This game has a reputation for precision, featuring a plethora of frame-perfect tricks, all backed by perfect planning for enemy patterns ahead of time. And, of course, this game features the classic sub-five-minute milestone run. <laughs> Beating the game in under five minutes is nothing to sneeze at, and takes a lot of practice and skill. That being said, nearly 350 different people have done it at this point. Go back five years, and that number shrinks to 63. And if we keep going back further, eventually, that number will shrink to one. Everyone who is familiar with Mario speedrunning knows about the famous sub-five minute run. We know when it happened, and who did it. We all know it was done by Andrew G in 4 minutes and 59.69 seconds on Christmas Eve in 2010. We all know that. That was the first sub-five. Or was it? Stick around to find out about some unearthed history in this classic game. Real quick, this video is sponsored by Manscaped. As you probably know, they have a variety of men's grooming products, but today our focus is on the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. This new beard trimmer has genuinely fantastic features, so here is my honest review of it. The biggest perk of this thing is definitely the zoom wheel that lets you really easily pick between 20 different lengths. My old trimmer only had 4 lengths and you had to juggle all the little attachments, but now the zoom wheel makes things super easy. I also seem to get done way faster than usual. It just works really well, no matter what length of beard or stubble that you want. It's really easy to clean because the guard is easy to take out and put back in, and it's all waterproof. It's way easier to tell how much charge the battery has than on any of my previous shavers. The charger is USB-C, it, it really just has everything. And speaking of having everything, the Pro Kit also comes with beard shampoo, conditioner, oil and balm, as well as a beard brush, comb, and scissors. If you'd like to try it out, go to the link on screen or in the description, and you can get 20% off plus free shipping on your order with promo code COSMIC. Alright, let's talk about it. What is this mysterious speedrun that might be the very first sub 5 minute run, and why wasn't it widely known about until now? This run was uncovered by Saradoc, someone who has always done an excellent job of maintaining this world record history page, and the first person to ever get 457 in this game. Earlier on in this game's history, there were a few different eras and a few separate communities for speedrunning the game. You have the Twin Galaxies era, these days we're in the speedrun.com era, and at one point back in the day, the PureCast community was going strong. This was a community of Japanese players with several strong runners like Hodoruby, Ohan, Lambda, just to name a few. They even hosted tournaments for this game, and still have every year since 2007. There's always been a bit of a disconnect between the English-speaking SMB1 communities I've been in and the Japanese scene. Probably mostly due to the obvious language barrier, but yeah, there's been very little overlap throughout the years. Every now and then, we'd catch wind of some excellent warpless run by Hodoruby, or find out that some runner had a very good any% percent time back in the day. And today, let's focus in on one of these very good any% percent times. This was a run I was very surprised to learn about just a few weeks ago. The run was done by the player Marukome a very strong competitor in the PureCast tournaments. He won the first three tournaments that they ever held in 2007 and 2008, and on July 31st of 2008, he got this run. Now I know what you're thinking, 514, how does that have any significance at all? Well, bear with me for a second. The PureCast community uses a different timing method for this game. They start timing on pushing start on the title screen, and end timing when Peach says her last line of dialogue. On speedrun.com, we always start timing when Mario starts moving, and stop timing when you touch the axe to defeat Bowser. This is important because the black screen before you start moving in 1-1 can vary in length by up to 20 frames. For that reason, it's better for comparisons to start timing from movement. As far as stopping timing on the axe versus at Princess Peach, it doesn't really matter, although it does mean if you spent time to collect a fire flower, you could save some of that time back by using fireballs to kill Bowser, so you don't have to watch him fall in the lava. Anyway, as far as this video is concerned, we're going to be talking about time starting from movement and ending on the axe. So, what is Marukame's time with this timing method? 5 minutes and 0.23 seconds. Now I know what you're thinking, that is not sub 5, what's the big idea? Once again, bear with me. Here's where it gets really interesting. Marukame's run was done on an emulator, and that itself, no issue at all. NES is one of the easiest consoles to emulate, and these days there's a handful of extremely accurate NES emulators to choose from. But, as it turns out, that wasn't the case in 2008. As I understand it, the most common emulator for speedrunning at the time was Virtua NES. The problem with this emulator is the frame rate. You're probably thinking the emulator slowed down at some points and that cost him the sub 5, but that's not it at all. 
The frame rate of this emulator was 60 frames per second. That sounds great! That's pretty much the standard for console games. Well, most console games. But back in 1985, that was not the standard. Back then, 60 FPS was too slow! It's too slow! The NES actually runs at roughly 60.1 frames per second. That means that over the course of 5 minutes, a standard NES will run about half a second faster than Marukame's emulator did. If the run was played at the regular NES frame rate, Marukame's time would have been 459.74. That's crazy! He essentially played a 459 two years before the first official sub-5 happened. Some may ask, can we just give him credit for that time? Gameplay-wise, it's pretty much the same, right? Well, the problem is that, technically, playing at a slower frame rate means he had a bigger window to do all the tricks. In this case, the difference is incredibly minute, but what if he played at 55 FPS? 30 FPS. 1 FPS. To keep things objective and fair, you have to only give credit to the player for the FPS that they played at. And again, in this case, it did barely make a difference, so it is definitely worth talking about, and that's why I'm here talking about it. There is one other caveat to talk about in this run, though, and more people will probably take issue with this one. This run used Turbo. Turbo means you can just hold a button, and it will rapid fire that button repeatedly as fast as possible. This was widely accepted among Japanese speedrunners back in the day, and probably still is among some communities out there. Even some licensed Nintendo controllers had turbo features, like the controller on the Sharp Twin Famicom Turbo. Is turbo even that useful in speedruns of this game though? In Warpless it would definitely be useful, to shoot Bowser with fireballs. But in any percent, what, it can make you swim upwards really fast? Well, let's look into some of the use cases. Turbo's not only good for repeated button presses, it's also good for doing very short button presses. There's a few places in the run where you ideally do as small of a jump as possible, and we can see Marukame make use of it in those places. This spot in 1-2 is especially useful, since you can just hold A in a huge window and get through here every time. And finally, there's this. This is actually really cool! In 4-2, you need to get Mario farther to the right side of the screen somehow, to do a glitch to get to the warp zone faster. There are several different ways to do this, but I had never seen it done quite like this. This was actually really innovative and clever, in my opinion. It is definitely made a lot easier via turbo, though. You normally have some pretty specific jump timings to deal with, but instead you can kind of just hold left and A. So yeah, that's pretty much the story of Marukame's run. Sure, it used turbo, but turbo didn't do any of the pipe jumps or other challenging areas for him. Marukame was definitely a very smart and skilled player, and with modern strategies, and software, he definitely could have gotten a really amazing time. What are your thoughts on this run? Let me know in the comments, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching!